Hey guys, Matt from Nod Studios here, and welcome back. Today we're going to be coming at you guys with some more Hearts of Iron 4, and without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Now, one of the first things that I want to go ahead and do here is actually add a new air wing into Kurdu Fan, which is one of the Sudanese territories that we annexed. So I'm just going to move over. I'm not going to move over all of the reserves. I am still going to leave a little bit in reserve, but we're, we're going to move over six of these multi-role Generation 2 aircrafts. So we'll just go ahead, hit OK on that. They'll go ahead and deploy right there. And the main reason why I'm doing that is so that way I can go ahead and use these airplanes attacking Ethiopia. Now, I don't think Ethiopia is really going to have an air force, or if they do, it's really not going to be that impressive. So, honestly, I'm not really too worried about it. Our ground troops should be able to handle the battle, and if they can't, then... You know, we have an extra ship, or a few extra ships. Up north here, we have these three divisions over here. One tank division and two infantry divisions. I just went ahead and created a new army for them. And what I think I'm going to do is give them a general, first of all. We'll give them... I don't want to give them the greatest general we have. We actually have no great generals. Okay, never mind. We'll give them this guy. General Yunez El Masri. Probably butchered that. I apologize, guys. But, yeah, Unis, you are going to be our brand new commander. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do with these troops right here is create a front line against Chad. And then we'll do an offensive line going way back into their country. Kaboom. All right. And that'll be their order, their battle plan for right now. Honestly, I'm really not planning on attacking Chad anytime soon, which is why I'm putting this dinky small force over there. However, in the future, we are definitely going to be targeting them for, you know, just a land grab for some more factories, for some more troops, manpower, all that sort of great and fun stuff. Ooh, wow, interesting. Major social liberal rally. An action is death. The only way leads forward. Our social liberals have today rallied in one of our urban centers. They demand government action on behalf of the lower classes and general progress towards freedom and liberty for all. <sighs> yeah, no, you're not getting my support. You can take the 3% popularity and shove off. Oh, and speaking of other countries to do a land grab on, Eritrea over here borders Ethiopia, and they're a relatively small country controlled by a progressive faction. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is not stage a coup. We're going to justify a war goal, a conquer war goal against Eritrea. It's going to take about 405 days. Ooh, that is pretty steep. Okay, maybe we should go for a different country. Maybe South Sudan. They're controlled by a reactionary government. They have a lot of nationalist influence, monarchist influence, and fascist influence. Yeah, that sounds like a crap hole going on there. I would not want to be a part of that. Let's go ahead and right-click on them and see how long it'll take to justify our war goal. The same amount of time. Okay, we could go for our brothers over here in the Central African Republic to honor our Superpower 2 playthrough, but honestly, not really feeling it. We have this small, really small breachway into uh, the Central African Republic, and... Frankly, squishing all of my troops through that is going to be a pain in the butt, so I don't really want to go for that right now. Yeah, I think South Sudan is our best bet. We're going to go ahead and begin our uh, justification on that. Alrighty, and it looks like Civilian Industry 3 has finished. So let's see. I think I might switch over to military factories really quickly. Let's take a look at our construction and our production and see what, you know, is going on. So we have seven factories being used for construction efforts right now. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to need some more civilian factories. With only seven currently constructing things, it makes me a little bit worried. Especially if, you know, we do create a few more military factories. We may need to use a few more civilian factories to be able to actually import various items. So I think I'm just going to do civilian industry four. And that should be pretty good for right now. Ah, yes. Okay, so today we have some world news for all of you amazing people. Kingdom of Sweden leaves the European Union. Today, the Swedish delegation to the European Parliament left the buildings in Brussels for what might be the last time. So we've been through this a million times. Sweden is leaving the EU along with a whole slew of other countries. 
airburst weapons 2 is all finished let's go into our research and do some more research on infantry design let's see can we do the next weapon oh yes we can Alrighty, so i think we're gonna jump straight to the m4a1 boom awesome yeah that'll definitely really help out in our upcoming wars i don't think we'll be able to use it against ethiopia since it's gonna take 184 days and i think we're almost done with our justification yeah, we have about 130 days on that, so it won't be quite finished in time. And now for an important announcement for all of you comrades out there. The Egyptian Communist Party has now gained the most popularity among all political parties in our country. They have a popularity of 28.3%, whereas second place, the FJP, or the Freedom and Justice Party, has 27.75% popularity. So while we do have the lead in terms of popularity, we are just only a little bit ahead of everyone else however it will continue to grow exponentially and eventually the only political party in egypt will be the communist party pocket defense finished itself so let's go ahead click on ok and select a new research we're just going to continue right along down the line of the infantry doctrine we'll do defense in depth by offering relatively light resistance and temporarily giving around, we can trade space for time and allow attacking forces to exhaust themselves before counterattacking. This will give us a little bit of a bonus to our entrenchment and our leg infantry organization. Perfect. Extra, extra, the Dutch Union leaves the European Union. Today, the Dutch delegation to the European Parliament left the buildings in Brussels for what might be the last time. And it looks like we now have enough political power to go ahead and modify our government. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that. Now let's see over here. Do we want to make ourselves more lightly regulated? It'll give us a boost in population, but we'll get more consumer factories. I think we'll just go ahead and leave this one on heavily regulated. That seems to be the best option. We don't really gain too much, but we also don't lose anything. So... I'm fine, honestly, with the way it is. Let's see. What about the tax rate, though? Could we lower it maybe a little bit? It'll up the research time by about 5%, which really stinks. However, it will give us a boost in stability every single week, and it'll also boost our monthly population. However, we will get a little bit more consumer goods factories floating around. So that also does kind of suck in terms of our militarization. Um, okay. Yeah, both of those options really aren't the best. If we were under the communists, we could go to early mobilization. That would actually be really, really helpful. Hmm, how long would it take me to get extensive conscription? Because that's really the way I want to go. It looks like we need 30% world tension or we are at war. So we'll actually be able to go ahead and do that when we declare war on Ethiopia. So I think I'm just going to leave those 150 points on the deck, on the table, and we'll take care of them in the future. And it looks like our national focus is just about to finish. We've only got three more days on that bad boy. Oh, now two. And now one. Yes, perfect. We're going to continue down and just finish civilian industry completely modern heavy equipment finished researching so let's go ahead and continue down the line there as well i'm just going to go ahead and switch it up i don't think i'm going to continue down the heavy equipment line for right now um, i think instead what we're going to do is go for basic 3d manufacturing this will give us a little bit of a boost in our efficiency cap and also give us a great boost a 10 percent boost to our factory output so definitely a huge plus there. We're going to go for it. Um, okay, something is very, very wrong in the world right now. North Korea is libertarian. <laughs> and now they're having their next election in 2021. <laughs> That's pretty insane, though. Could you imagine North Korea in our lifetime in the actual world turning into a libertarian force? That would be very, very interesting. I wonder how they would make that like transition. How do you go from a super ultra controlling Orwellian state like North Korea to do whatever the heck you want libertarianism? Anyways, I just thought that was very interesting. I was just kind of scrolling around and I noticed that Korea wasn't so communist anymore. So that's really interesting. South Korea, they're conservative. Okay, so nothing off there. Just North Korea, it looks like. 
2018 Pyeongchang Olympics. After losing both bids for the 2010 Olympics by three votes and the bid for the 2014 Olympics by four votes, Pyeongchang's third bid in a row eviscerated in Munich, Germany, and Anecki, France, or Anecki, Ane uh, anyways, with 63 to 25 to seven votes and winning in the first round. The 23rd Olympic Winter Games were held from February 9th to February 25th, 2018 in Pyeongchang County in northwestern South Korea. Several NOCs were highly successful, including South Korea, Norway, the United Kingdom, Germany, and the United States. North Korea, as expected, boycotted the tournament. Now that doesn't seem very libertarian of them. Very well, the games are concluded. Now Austria has left the European Union. Guys, I can't deal with this. Now, <laughs> this is actually one of the reasons why I love this mod so much. There's just so many political backgrounds and ideological backgrounds that you can choose. Whereas in the base game, there's only three, communism, democracy, and fascism. But in this, it actually splits it along the real life ideological guidelines. So you have nationalism, social liberalism, communism, social democracy, you have all different types of democracy infused with different types of communism and, and fascism. It's, it's great. I just love it. But really, Empire of Vietnam, you guys have turned over to fascism from communism. <laughs> Why? Like, what, what, what are y'all trying to do over there, man? Mark my words right now. Vietnam is going to start the Fourth Reich. Just when I thought it couldn't get any better with Vietnam, the Kingdom of Sweden. Yes, you've heard that right. They've reverted from democracy all the way back <laughs> to their monarchist model. Oh boy. And in Austria, take a look at this, guys. The state of Austria, they're now nationalist. I think this is why the European Union has been falling apart. Let's take a look at the Dutch, okay? Okay, Belgium, they're okay. I wanted to take a look at the Dutch, though. <laughs> wow, so they are communists now. So I guess all of this political upheaval is probably the reason why the European Union is failing so much. I mean, there's just too much going on. You have the communists going up, you have the nationalists in Austria, and then the monarchists. Yeah, Europe is just being completely overrun with political upheaval and political revolution. Wow, in a reactionary France? Okay, that's something you don't see every day. Yes, comrades. You are reading this correctly. Justification of conquering Tigre and Afar for Egypt has finished. <laughs> yes, let's do, let's do it. We're going to go ahead, click on declare war. Gets event. Oh, look at that. Egypt goes to war. Let's go ahead. Oh, no. We didn't finish our guys training, though. Uh, oops. Uh, we probably should have done that, but I guess they're all trained up and ready to go now. They'll be a force to be reckoned with. So they're just going to take a minute to go ahead and prepare their war plans. And then they should be, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Or should we just execute it, honestly? I think we should just execute it. Oh, they're still preparing. I'm going to wait for those guys to, uh, you know, finish preparing, though. Because if they don't finish preparing, they take a huge penalty. Ah, uh, what the heck? We're losing, guys. I'm just going to go ahead, activate them. They're still preparing, but what the heck? We need them in battle, so we've got to activate them. There we go. We took back that province that they overtook right there. Now, let's go ahead. We created those six Air Force units over here. I'm going to send them into Ethiopia. Yes, great work, comrades. We have broken through their front line. Oh, this is glorious progress. Okay, and now the M4A1 has finished researching. So let's go ahead, go back into the menu. And I think we'll go ahead and do... We should probably actually research some of the armors. Those are really, really helpful. However, this is more of a defensive research. So, you know, we kind of are attacking right now. So maybe we shouldn't go for that. Maybe some of the, uh, like, uh, support weapons. Or maybe some of, like, these attachments right here. I think the lightweight small arms is probably our best bet. We will get a plus 2% soft attack, so I'm going to go ahead and research that. Then we need to go ahead and switch out our outdated equipment with the M4A1. 
beautiful. Look at that, guys. And I think next we should actually start researching some more artillery because our artillery research is terrible. So I would definitely like to get better artillery and better tanks as well. Civilian Industry 5 has completed, so we'll go ahead and do Military Industry 2. And now that we're at war, we can actually go ahead and modify our government policy. So we could either do extensive conscription, or we could switch over to an early mobilization economic model. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that because if we take a look at the civilian economy, ooh, yeah, that's terrible. We get huge, huge defects from being in a civilian economy. So we want to mobilize as fast as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to early mobilization. That'll definitely really help out with construction speed and all of that great stuff. All right, so unfortunately this battle plan is not working out at all. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is reform the battle plan. Let's go ahead and create a front line over here. Oh no, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to create a small one. Oh, no, 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 no. Like that. There we go. Then we're going to assign the whole entire army to that one position. And I think they're already there, right? Oh, they are already there. Jeez. Okay, well, we'll have them push over there, right? And then we have the other army over here. That's going to form the rest of the front line. And they will just push over here. Alrighty, now let's see. How is that going to line up? 0%. The plan is considered to be risky. The plan is considered to be to our disadvantage. I don't even know if they'll be able to break through with that. Yeah, see, this is the problem that I was telling you guys about before in regards to Ethiopia. Ooh, hello. <laughs> We've got a lot going on here. Let's go ahead and switch over to Military Industry 3. The African Alliance, attempting to reduce Western and Chinese influence on the African continent, leading African politicians are currently meeting in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to negotiate the responsibility, or rather possibility, of reforming most of the African Union into an African military alliance. Ooh, okay, I don't know if I really like that or not, because that means that possibly my military expansion is going to be cut short. Chances seem good that most African states will end up joining Ethiopia's new international project and political analysts already see NATO, CSTO, and Chinese influence in the entirety of Africa threatened due to the newfound strength of the United African countries. Ooh, okay. A massive development indeed. Well, we need to take out freaking Ethiopia before this alliance actually goes down because uh, I'm honestly not- Oh no. Oh, no. Wow. Okay. Um. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, can we offer peace? No, we can't. Oh, no. Okay, well, um, let's go ahead and assign the free military factory that we have to creating modern advanced equipment over there, the M4A ones. Then we're going to need a little bit more steel from China, so we'll just go ahead and allocate one more factory to do that. And it looks like we got some volunteers, ooh, from Russia, okay, from the United Kingdom, and from the USA. Now, can we join, like, the USA in their alliance? Like, can we join NATO? Oh, no, I don't think we can. I think they would have to invite us, right? Yeah, I don't see any sort of... I could ask to join pop... Oh, yeah. Conservative popularity has to be greater than 30%, and there also has to be some world tension. Dang. So they are definitely not going to be able to directly help us. At least not as, you know, directly as I would hope. Dang. All right. Um, what we need to go ahead and do then is completely rework this plan to um, focus on the national defense of our country. So let's see here. We need to go ahead and <laughs> create a huge majugly right over there. Oops. I didn't extend it quite as far as I should have. Dang it. Redraw it. 
There we go. Sorry about that. Can we not? What about the Central African Republic? Or is that, does that count them? Or maybe they can't even move over. I don't know, guys. That's all it's letting me do. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that whole entire division to hold that down. I don't think this is going to work very well, by the way, guys. Um, then we'll assign a front line over there for this army. And we'll have them push right on in to Libya. I don't think this is going to work, guys. Oh, we're going to get completely stomped. Another major social liberal ra uh, rally going on. Another major social liberal rally going on. Ugh, I really couldn't be bothered by that right now. Oh, we have so many countries joining in war against us. Oh, no. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah, that is it for Egypt, guys. Wow. They're going to freaking take everything we own. Portugal leaves the European Union. And there's the uh, volunteer, <laughs> I don't think they're going to do much. There's the volunteer regiments that just came in from abroad. Oh, man. This is terrible, guys. I don't think that this is going to end well at all. We are completely pushed back to the eastern portion of Egypt, and we are just getting completely stomped on by everyone that went to war with us. We are now, I think, above the 50% needed for them to actually capitulize us. However, the war hasn't been going on long enough for them to actually do that. So I think they have to, you know, occupy the entirety of my country or at least capture Cairo, which I don't think they're going to be able to do because we have a bunch of foreign units there in Cairo. So I'm just going to go ahead and wait and see how things play out. For our infantry doctrine, I'm going to go ahead and go for the mass mobilization doctrine. We're going to go for the People's Army. The People's Army believes in the primacy of men over weapons, with superior motivation compensating for inferior technology, and enjoys widespread support from the civilian population. Mutually exclusive with large front operations, which is the opposing division in the tree line. So we're going to go for the People's Army. Sweet. And it looks like our lightweight small arms are almost finished. So we'll go ahead and do another research there as well. We'll move on to, let's do Net Warrior. And this is where it all ends, comrades. This is where it all ends. We are completely surrounded around Cairo. All we have basically are foreign forces to protect us. And I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Okay, guys. So the war has been going on for a really long time. Our foreign expeditionary forces are just kind of sitting in Cairo and holding it off. You know, they're defending it very well, actually. I'm surprised that they are able to defend it so well. But basically what's going to end up happening is this is going to go on forever until, you know, they fall, until our defenders cannot defend us anymore. And then what's going to happen is we're going to turn into a super small country. Libya is going to take everything. They might puppet us. Something like that is going to happen, but either way, we basically lost the game. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to, I'm going to open up the console and I'm just going to white piece out with Ethiopia, right? There we go. The Egypt Republic signed a white peace treaty with Ethiopia. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's really all I can do. Other than that, we basically lost the game, and after three episodes, I don't really see, you know, I already uploaded the first two episodes, so I don't really want to end off, you know, with three episodes. Woo, a big grand series of only three episodes. So I'm just going to do that, and that'll get them out of our territory. Because the way that war was going, it was never, literally never going to end. So I do apologize that we had to do that. But honestly, if we didn't, this playthrough wouldn't continue. So I don't know. I, I, I really apologize. I don't like using cheats. I really don't. But that was really the only way I could see us managing to continue playing as Egypt. So I do apologize for that, guys, but I am going to go ahead and leave this episode off here. We got completely annihilated by Libya and the African Union that is now formed. So if we switch over to the uh, factions map menu, we can see, 
oh yeah, the African Alliance is in full force. The whole entirety, basically, of Africa is under this alliance, which is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So we're going to have to start looking towards the Middle East, like Israel, Jordan, the Syria, Lebanon, those sorts of countries um, in order for us to expand. Once again, I really apologize about everything that happened. Let me know in the comments section below, though, what you guys think I should do and what we should do about this whole entire situation. Should we start anew as a different country or should we just accept this white peace and continue on with our lives? Let me know in the comments below. And once again, thank you guys so, so much for watching and tuning into this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, please comment, and please, please, please subscribe. It really helps out, guys, and it really does mean a lot. So once again, thank you all so, so much, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.